If you think there's nothing to do in Newcastle and Lawrence County, then think again. Always stay connected to NCTV45 to receive the information on events going on in and around the area on a daily basis. Programs to view are Newswatch, The Morning Show, and Community Happenings. NCTV45 takes pride in bringing you the event and organization info that you want. NCTV45 is the number one media source locally. NCTV45, anytime on your time. There's more than meets the eye. You got a gift from the Newcastle I try. The right small town for living. Look around. NC TV 45, the train, anytime on your time. NC TV 45, the train, anytime on your time. Watching News Watch, and I am Tanya. I'm here to bring to you, Newcastle, an extremely important event. We need you to rise up and have your voices heard. Now, if you're not aware and you have not been watching, you can always go back to the NCTV website and hear about the YDC building being purchased by Hira Educational Services. They are desiring to put a Muslim school. We are questioning the intentions of that due to the validity of their website and other things that are public knowledge. So if you want to learn more, I'm going to petition you to please come to the Shenango Municipal Building. Thanks, Ange, and welcome to Newswatch. My name is Tanya. And I don't know if you've been curious, but Beaver County VA Outpatient Clinic in Monaca is moving. And to where, you might ask? Well, I will answer that for you. Approximately three miles away to 300 Britain Avenue. And that's going to be suite 10, 110, sorry about that, in Rochester, PA. And don't worry, the phone number and the fax will remain the same. All right, well, back to you, Angel, for Newcastle. It is not going to allow us to increase and grow in jobs and so on and so forth. But we are going to have you have your own opinion at the Shenango uh, Municipal Building at 10 a.m. tomorrow, the 8th. And uh, you can also, if you'd like to join the petition, go to cccwp.us. All right? Now, back to Ange. NC TV 45, the train, anytime on your time. Hello, and yes, NC TV 45 news. I want to thank Tanya for uh, telling everybody about the meeting today out at Shenango, and NC TV 45 was there. We are going to go to our meeting clip we are going to have hopefully after that one of the uh, speakers that so eloquently explained about the funding we'll do sports weather and uh, that will be our noon news so uh, we're going to take this opportunity and we're going to go immediately to the meeting Thanks for watching NCTV. Hello. Um, recently, this morning, I attended a meeting over in Shenango Township. And during that meeting, I had an opportunity to discuss some concerns I had about the recent development for the YDC properties. Um, one of my concerns was who exactly is funding this project. There's a lot of unknowns as far as the HIRA Educational Services who has currently submitted a bid. 
that is in the first stages of approval um, for a project. One of the biggest concerns that I have as a resident in Lawrence County is there are no plans submitted as far as how they're going to utilize this facility. Um, are they going to build upon it? Are they going to use the existing structures? What exactly is going to be done and what are the impacts going to be on the community as a result of that? Um, another primary concern is that nobody seems to know who this HIRA educational services nobody knows who that they are everything seems to be shrouded clouded in mystery if you go on to their website um, it's a simple one-page website for an educational services company um, it is chocked full of grammatical errors spelling errors and that raises a lot of concern um, is who exactly they are I'm very disappointed by our government officials um, for not releasing this type of information. Also, at the meeting this morning, there was no one from the HRA Educational Services. There was no one there even to speak and answer questions and concerns we as citizens have about the HRA Educational Services. Um, one of my primary concerns regarding that is who is funding HIRA educational services who is funding the four hundred thousand um, dollars my biggest concern that I have is that HIRA is an educational component of the Muslim Youth of America MYNA MYNA describes itself as a self-managed program of the Islamic Society of North America ISNA MINA and ISNA have been closely associated with Tablighi Jamaat, a jihad organization that served as a recruiting ground for Al-Qaeda. Like ISNA, MYNA is a connect in a significant way to the Muslim Brotherhood. I want to know, as I'm sure you do, who these people are that, have, that are in the process of purchasing, purchasing this land for development and exactly what their intentions are. As far as the money component, um, I know a lot of times from my experience and my understanding is that these organizations are funded by the North American Islamic Trust. The North American Islamic Trust, we have to look at who they are and what we know about them. And to do that, we need to examine evidence that was used during the Holy Land Foundation trials. The North American Islamic Trust was an unindicted co-conspirator of the Holy Land Foundation trial, which was found to be funding Hamas, as revealed in the explanatory memorandum submitted into evidence. The explanatory memorandum on the general strategic goal for the group in North America was written in 1991 by a member of the Board of Directors for the Muslim Brotherhood in North America and senior Hamas leader Mohammed Akram. They are the Muslim Brotherhood. They are terrorists. My concern is if there is any affiliation or there are any agreements, relationships between the HRA educational services and the NAIT, that in effect we would be welcoming potential terrorists into our community. Another concern is how that property is going to be utilized because it is an educational service will it be used for educational purposes and subsequently will a mosque be erected when a mosque is built they are funded by the North American Islamic Trust the NAIT dictates to the mosque which imam they are going to get we all know when a mosque is built the imam radicalizes the neighborhood Muslims all acts of terrorism are committed by a Muslim who is faithful to a mosque. They are devout Muslims and have been radicalized by the EM of that mosque. By approving the sale, my concern is we would be potentially inviting in acts of terrorism into the community. And we have to ask ourselves at that point, do we want another Manchester? Do we want a London Bridge here in Lawrence County? 
The other concern is the impact on the infrastructure. While it's my understanding there's been many proposals to bring industry and businesses into our community, into Lawrence County, they never came to fruition. However, this group has all of a sudden come in and they're brokering our lands and ultimately our jobs that would impact our infrastructure. The financial costs of a mosque in a neighborhood are unbelievable and would drain our current infrastructure that's already struggling. All Muslims live close as they can to their mosque and this affects the cause of education, health care, jobs, housing, law enforcement, all areas. If you have a mosque, it opens the door for inviting Muslim immigrant refugees into your community. Our community already has a problem with housing, with law enforcement, and the current war on drugs. My concern is that a move of this type without any information, without any type of investigation would further impact and burden our current infrastructure that's already struggling. So what I would like to see from our governor, what I would like to see from our legislators, I would like a lot of questions answered. I would like to see a full investigation into who exactly HIRA Educational Services is. Who are they funded by? Who are their business relations and contacts? And most of all, what is their history that they've had in other communities? The second thing that I would like is I would like to see a detailed plan on how they would like to develop this land. What are their intentions and an impact study done to see how this type of facility or land use, how would that impact our community and our infrastructure? We're going to sports, weather, this is WCTV 45. Programming provided through funding from Daimyo and Olson Law Group with offices in Elwood City and in Newcastle in the Washington Center. Daimyo and Olson Law Group. Funding provided by Four Brothers, Four Brothers in downtown Newcastle. NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. Hello and welcome to Four Brothers 45 Weather. Well, after last night's mostly cloudy low of 50, how is your Thursday looking? Partly sunny, high of 72, chance of rain only 20%. Now Friday night, partly cloudy low of 50, chance of rain remains at 20%. Then we swing into, yeah, you got it, Friday, last day of school, Everybody's going to be happy, and you're going to be happy with this one. Mostly sunny, high of 76. Winds will be calm, and it'll be a picture-perfect day, so get out and have a good time. Kiddos will be all happy. Now, Friday night, mostly cloudy, a low of 57. Chance of rain, only 20%. As you swing into Saturday, mostly sunny, a high of 80. Great day to hit the pool, hit the links, or just work around the garden. Now, Saturday night, partly cloudy, low of 61. Sunday, yes, sunny with a high of 87. Great day to get outside. Now, Sunday night, mostly clear, low of 64. And as some of you start back to week, work, week, work, this is what you're going to get. Mostly sunny on Monday, a high of 89, yes, 
Kiddos are home and the temperature's going up. Now, Monday night, mostly clear, low 66. And then Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high of 89. Now, that was Four Brothers 45 weather. Better get the lemonade out and uh, make sure you got a lot of water. The kiddos will be coming in for those drinks. Now, we're going to be right back after we take this break. This program paid for by a grant from RNA Screen Printing, located at 1217 Moravia Street, Newcastle. Well, welcome back, and that's going to do it for this Thursday and the midday report of Newswatch. You know, so many great things going on this weekend, and we bring you all the positive stuff that's happening, and I could just go on and on and on, but rather than do that, I only have one thing to say. Make sure you tell a friend about NCTV45 they'll be glad you did. Remember, we're available anytime on your time. And by all means, make sure you get that second cup of coffee. And have a great Thursday afternoon in what I call the greatest castle in the world, in the county of Lawrence. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and we'll see you for the Nightly News Watch.